is. They're builders. So, this is a celebration of all of that. Now, the Christians have taken this holiday, which was a Roman holiday, a pagan holiday, a holiday celebrated around this time of the year in every pagan culture, almost every pagan culture out there. It's a, cel- it's a holiday that the Jews celebrate, Hanukkah, which is a celebration of, uh, you know, of rebellion, of independence, of freedom. I put freedom in quotes because it's not real freedom, not individual freedom. It's freedom of the Jews from the, from the uh, uh, Greeks. It's, it's a collectivistic type of freedom. But nevertheless, it, it's, uh, Hanukkah was a, is celebrating a, a rebellion of the Jews against the Greeks for religious freedom reasons. The Greeks were trying to impose. This is the post-Alexander the Great. They're not even Greeks. They're really Macedonians. Trying to impose their religion and their culture onto the Jews. Now, I happen to think the Greeks had a better culture than the Jews. So sometimes on Hanukkah, I kind of regret that the uh, Jews won that one. Uh, maybe it would have been better for the Jews and for everybody else if the, if the uh, Greeks had won. But, but nevertheless, Hanukkah is a celebration of, against, of, of the victory of those who were trying to defend their religion against religion, religious oppression against the Greeks of that period, not the Greeks of uh, 300 years earlier, the Greeks of that period who were authoritarian and, uh, and, and uh, who were nowhere near, this is nowhere near the, the, the height of Greek philosophy and Greek art, uh, which is a period that I would have embraced over Judaism any day. Um, so Hanukkah is a celebration of that. It has a lot of mystical elements, you know, the menorahs, because it was a miracle. That, that helped to, you know, that kept the Manoah alive for seven days. But, you know, it's kind of a minor miracle. Who cares? Uh, and um, and the Maccabees who won were not good guys. They were a bit of religious fanatics, and they kind of imposed their religious fanaticism on the Jewish people after they won the victory. Fine, okay. But, you know, but at the end of the day, pagan, this 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 holiday is a holiday that Christians the Christians adopted, they, they, you know, they, they initiated a holiday at the end of December. I don't think this is when Jesus was born, it, to the extent that Jesus, uh, you know, Jesus was a real man. Uh, he was born probably sometime in the spring, at least that's what historians suggest. Uh, but the Christians needed a holiday to compete with the pagans. So what did they do? They, they took the same time frame, the winter, winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, and they picked a holiday around the same time. And then on top of that, they stole all the good things that the pagans, you know, had adopted. So, for example, in in Rome, this holiday was associated with gift giving. So the Christians took that. Uh, In Scandinavia, and I think in Rome, it was associated with a certain worship of trees, particularly in the cold environment of Scandinavia, where, where trees were a symbol of life. The evergreen tree is a symbol of life. They brought the tree in to, uh, you know, into the, uh, into the home. All of the, all of the customs that today we associate with Christmas were created either by pagans and adopted by, by Christians, or they were created by greedy capitalists trying to recreate money. So, for example, Santa Claus, as we know today, is a combination of different characters from uh, different uh, European, uh, uh, you know, mythologies. But, the Santa Claus we know today is a creation of Coca-Cola from the 1930s and a creation of retailers who have, you know, children sit on Santa's lap and ask for presents and all that kind of stuff. That's all a creation. That's all a creation uh, of, um, of Santa Claus. You know, a, a lot of the lights and the celebration and the benevolence, the benevolence of this, right, is a consequence of 19th century retail marketing. Uh, Macy's is to a large extent responsible for much of modern day Christmas and and the way it's celebrating. And I love modern day Christmas. I love Jolly Santa Claus. Uh, I I love the idea of giving gifts. I don't kind of, I don't really, I love even the idea of Santa Claus judging you and deciding who's good and who's bad. That's very non-Christian, right? Why should a bad kid not get presents? That's not right. Even if he says he's sorry, how about he goes to confessional? Does he still get presents then? Santa Claus judges. If you're a bad kid, you get, you get what? Coal. You get coal. How cool is that? Right? How cool is that? Um, 
so it's it's a, it's it's just a you know I love Christmas trees I love the lights uh, I love the idea of, of of decorating them with the gifts underneath the tree and again the tree was was uh, Scandinavia celebrating their ability to survive in the in the face of this harsh winter and here was a tree that also survived in this harsh winter so uh, the tree symbolizes our ability as human beings to survive in spite of that. Uh, so it, it's just a, it's just a wonderful holiday. So those of you upset because it celebrates Jesus' birth, get over it. Get over it. Let those guys over there celebrate Jesus' birth. None of us are really celebrating that. And you know what? They're not even celebrating that. Because nothing they do actually reflects Jesus' birth. Now, you know, some of the music, some of them go to church. But even church, they go, why? Because it's nice music, because it's pretty, because they get to celebrate with other people, because they get to hang out with people. You know, it's just it's just a, a cool holiday. I mean, um, and and uh, we always celebrate it here. You know, we, we open presents in the morning, and we have a, a nice dinner in the evening, and we have friends over, and we have family over, and it, it's great. It's great. So, uh, yeah, it, it, favorite Christmas song. Somebody posted this on the chat. My favorite Christmas song is Santa Baby, particularly when sung, and I forget who sings it, it, you know, in a really, really sexy voice. Santa Baby is the perfect Christmas song. It's just so much fun, right? So, objectivists, if you love yourself, if you love your life, if you love the life that you can have, if you love the life that, that is there as a potential for you, uh, if you love the world in which you live, and if you love people because of their potential to create, to build, to make, to discover, then you got to love Christmas. And you have to remind people all over that we are the benevolent ones. We are the ones who celebrate life. We, we love this. We love Christmas. We love everything about Christmas. And we love human beings. Human beings. Who is more benevolent than a good uh, objectivist? Now, there are a lot of objectivists out there, I know who you are, who are not benevolent, who are nasty, dogmatic idiots. Stop it. you got to stop it, Right? It might have been Marilyn Monroe who, who sang Santa Baby. She would be perfect for Santa Baby. If it wasn't her, she should have sung it. But uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what, I think it's Eartha Kitt also sings it. So there are, a number, there are probably a number of interpretations. But I can just envision Marilyn Monroe singing it. it would be, it's the perfect, perfect kind of combination of, of sexiness with, uh, with uh, 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 song. Uh, so we got to get over this image that we have as grouches, so stop being a grouch, life is good, life is good, stop being fearful, and this is my Christmas message to you all, and then we'll talk about Christmas movies quickly, S stop being fearful of Muslims, of Mexican immigrants, of the economy being destroyed tomorrow, there's too much to enjoy in life, there's too much good in life to live in fear, stop living in fear, Embrace life. Think about solutions. Think about positives. Look for the positives. Maybe they're not falling on top of your head, but go find them. It's your life. Live it.